Ever pinch pennies all year for that one family vacation only to feel the budget blues afterwards? If so, I was just like you. After three vacationless years, I stumbled on credit card rewards travel and cracked the code to amazing vacations that I could actually afford. Welcome to Wonderland on Points. In this podcast, you will discover how opening credit cards strategically can save you thousands on travel. We're not just dreamers anymore. We're two adventurous moms turning dreams into reality. Join us as we spill all the points and miles secrets. And contrary to popular belief, you don't have to spend a million dollars to earn a million points. Traveling on credit card points isn't reserved for those with overflowing bank accounts. It's for everyday people like you and me, learning to turn routine expenses into free travel. Consider us your points travel guides. This is Wonderland on Points. Let the adventure begin. Happy June, everybody. Welcome summertime. We are here all summer long to continue bringing you brand new episodes of Wonderland on Points. And today we are very excited to take a very deep dive into one of the most popular cards for points and miles travel, and that is the Amex Gold Card. It is a staple in my wallet. Joe, I think it's a staple in your wallet as well. And I'm excited mm-hmm. for people to get a really deep look at to as to why it's so wonderful. Yeah, I love this card. I was hesitant at first because to me, I'm still trying to get over that hurdle of the you know, large annual fees. I feel like $250 is a large annual fee, but as we'll talk about today, that cost is super offset by the benefits. And especially if you're in just an earning season, there's no better card in my opinion with the four times points on groceries and four times points on dining. I mean, between those two categories alone, that's feels like the majority of my family's spending the groceries anyways. So this card has a lot of really cool features and we've been talking about doing a deep dive for a while and today is that day. So it's just me and you today. That's right. But I have to say I did have a hotel stay this week. Oh, really? <laughs> Where yes, was I that? Did. Yes, I did. And it was at the Heartbreak Hotel because Amex <laughs> broke my heart. Amex is in trouble. Tell everybody what they did to you, these foul creatures. Oh, my goodness. Just kidding. We love you, Amex. We're about to sing Amex praises for the next little bit of the show as we tell people about the Amex Gold. But I have a very hefty chunk of Amex Gold points that I have earmarked for a big trip for my family next summer. And the trip that we were looking to book was a trip to South Korea for all five members of my family. I was going to book through Virgin on Korean Air. There's a direct flight that I had all picked out. And so I was going to use the 30% transfer bonus that was supposed to be good through May 31st to transfer my points to Virgin. But because I'm a commitment phobe and have this phobia about pulling the trigger, I never transferred my points until I went on the morning of May 31st to transfer all my points, to commit, decide, all right, we're doing this. And the transfer bonus was gone. Oh my gosh. It makes me actually nauseous. I'm so sorry gone 30% transfer bonus. Like this was going to save us 80,000 points yeah. on this trip. And, and it was now, supposed to go through the 31st, but you did some digging and you found out something that I don't think is common knowledge about these transfer bonuses. Yes. So what I found out was some other people were in the same boat as me, very frustrated that it was supposed to still be going on. And basically, someone who contacted Amex found out that it was a very popular transfer bonus for good reason. And basically, Amex exhausted the bonus. And so they end up ended up ending the bonus early without telling anyone. And they're kind of like, at any point, we could end a bonus early. You know, I thought a published deadline yeah. would hold up. Yeah. Well, it did not. It did no. not. So... That's my tragedy. We're going to switch game plan and we will go somewhere else with those points, but it's not going to be South Korean. It's not going to be through Virgin Atlantic. 
I'm so sorry because I know how excited you were about that. But you had such a good attitude when you were telling me this. You were just like, you know, it's just a sign that it's not meant to be. And I was like, you're so much better than me. I would have been on, in a puddle on the floor, kind of like when I didn't book my honeymoon when the Hyatt devaluation had happened and the hotel I really wanted to go to went up a gajillion points a night. And then I was like, no, this is not happening anymore. Like, it's just kind of that sick feeling that you missed out on something because you were too afraid to book it, even though they're all refundable. It's really yeah. though, transferring is scary because they're stuck there forever. And that's like, that does, that's a lot. Right. That was my biggest thing because I knew the flight would be there, but I just, I, I was so nervous about committing to it. And the day before on the 30th, I was working a 12 hour shift at the hospital. So I really could not do it then, but I was texting with my husband and he was like, no, we're doing this a hundred percent. I was Aww. like, okay. So I woke up first thing in the morning on the 31st, ready to do it. And it was not there. My heart. So if you are like me and you unfortunately missed out, it, it doesn't always work because we have different amounts of points with different banks. But keep in mind that Chase does still have a 30% transfer bonus to Virgin. That is supposedly going through June 15th. But as we have learned, it's a very popular transfer partner and 30% is a nice hefty bonus. So if you want to take advantage of that, I highly recommend doing it a few days early, just <laughs> in the off chance that Chase also ends the transfer bonus early. Yes, 100%. And while we're doing cautionary tales, um, this is not strictly Amex related, but I did learn something this week. Um, our dear friend of the pod, Wilderness Youth Guardians on Instagram, um, Stephanie, has posted in our Facebook group, so you might have seen it. Um, she did her first redemption this past week at uh, Hyatt Place in Niagara Falls, and I had helped her with this process of like getting the cards and getting her first points and transferring to Hyatt. And I was so proud and so excited. And one of the main things we had been talking about is I was like, this is such a great option because it's free breakfast because I had a misconception that every domestic Hyatt place had free breakfast. We did know that some international Hyatt places do not. But I truly believed that all of the domestic Hyatt places had free breakfast. What we have learned is that it is almost all, not all. So if you are planning a Hyatt place or a Hyatt house stay, expecting free breakfast, just hop on your Hyatt app and just make sure free breakfast is listed. Because I was literally shocked to find out that this Hyatt place did not have free breakfast. And I felt bad. I felt a little like we we led our people astray here. Aww. But I think they still had a great time. So um, just, you know, do a little do a little Googling next time. Or maybe I should do Googling before I give people bad advice. But <sighs> this Niagara Falls is on the New York side. I double checked. So um, I don't know what their deal is. How dare? How, How dare, dare they? they? <laughs> How dare they? All right. So that's all our cautionary tales to start yeah, let's off get the into episode. happy stuff. Let's get into some happy stuff. And the Amex Gold has been happy stuff for me because if you have been a listener from the very beginning, you may know that the Amex Gold was my personal very first hard for traveling with points and miles. Now, my husband already had a Chase Sapphire Preferred from years past when we didn't really know what we were doing. We weren't truly in the game, but Amex Gold was my first card, and it was my first credit card that I actually ever got in my name, so it was extra special. Like, it made me feel like a true grown-up. <laughs> <laughs> that I finally had a credit card. So we're going to chat about that today. Joe, why don't we dig into first, tell people what the typical welcome offer is for this card. Yes. So I was lucky enough to get it. This is my most recent card from the beginning of March. Um, and I was lucky enough to get it when it was offering the 90,000 point welcome offer. But typically, it's 60,000 points after 6K spend, but that spend is stretched over six months instead of four months, which is what you see with a lot of other cards. So it's the hard thing about it is that they don't seem to elevate consistently for everyone. 
when I was getting offered the 90K, lots of people were not. The link was giving different offers to different people. I was testing it, sending it to friends and family. And I was like, tell me what this is offering you. Some people were offered 60. Some people were offered 75. Some people were offered 90. My friends and family who were offered 90, I was like, highly recommend you guys get this card. Nobody jumped on it, though, because people are afraid of annual fees like I was talking about. So we're going to dig into why this is an amazing card, even with that annual fee. But um I personally would probably go for this even without an elevated offer. That's how much I like this card. Definitely. An extra 30,000 points is incredible. And I feel very lucky that it happened to offer it to me then. Um, But I would not tell people to wait, especially if they have a huge grocery bill. Anyone with a big family, I would say probably go for it. Yeah. 90,000 is definitely the highest that I have seen on the personal Amex gold. Mm -hmm. I got it at 60 though. I got it at the lower and I have loved the card and it is what it is. Sometimes you don't hit the right time of year. When I have seen that 90K the most popping up has usually been in the spring, March, April, range. Amex is kind of funny too with a lot of their cards, especially their business cards, their platinum card. If you're Googling for offers and you use different browsers, you use an incognito browser, people seem to be able to find different Amex offers all the time. But on the Amex Gold, never seen it above 90 and 60 is very standard and it's okay to get 60. That's what I got too. Yeah, it is. And you can earn points very, very quickly with this card because of the Forex on groceries and dining, but also because of your ability to stack Rakuten with it, which we talk about all the time. And we've told people a million times last year, you earned 75,000 points um, with Rakuten. And uh, just recently, they had a 20% PetSmart Rakuten. It was just a one day thing. So I went and purchased a bunch of pet supplies from PetSmart and linked um, I and got the points back in Amex points versus cash. So, you know, the, the cash back on that would have been like $40, but the points is 4,000 points. And I was finding, um, you know, domestic flights from like Seattle to Washington for like 4,000 Amex points today when I was looking around. It was like a transfer to Delta or something like that, which shocked me. But that's just an example of like why it might be a good idea to take the Amex points over the cash back in Rakuten because those points are a lot more valuable than 40 bucks. Right, right. They definitely stretch a lot further. Mm -hmm. Let's dig into the point categories. This is not a super complicated card in respect to having many, many, many different categories. No, it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's pretty simple. The big one that we mentioned already is you get four times points on groceries and restaurants. That is massive. Four Mm -hmm. times. I mean, that is by far our biggest budget item in our house is food. Yep. All the time. Yep. So four times points on all of that is excellent. And then you get three times points booked on flights in the Amex portal or, and this is huge to me, directly with the airline. This is a big benefit in my opinion, because many other banks require you to use their portal in order to get a a huge multiplier on flights. Yeah, And so the fact that you can still get three times points by booking directly with the airline, I think that's awesome. It is awesome. And because a lot of times when you book with a portal, stuff gets complicated if things go wrong. And if you're booking directly with an airline, it's very, very easy. Whatever you need to do when you need to talk to a person, they need to pull up your reservation. There's no third-party systems happening at all. I was able to book my flight home from Salt Lake City. As we all know, I accidentally didn't get that on point. So I was able to book that with my Amex Gold and get a multiplier on those points. Something really cool that I was also able to do with that, which I did not talk about, is I was able to split it into a payment plan for $10. And for me, having to come up with $400 plus all of a sudden 
for a flight that I was not expecting to have to pay for was really stressful. And for like 10 extra dollars, it let me split that over the course of three months. I don't usually recommend that to people because I don't want to recommend anything that creates debt or interest or anything like that. But this didn't create like a 25, 26% interest. It was a $10 charge and it allowed me a little bit of breathing room, but I still got all the points and all the benefits of booking the travel with that card. And I didn't have to be quite as stressed out by something that I was not expecting. So that was kind of nice. It's a it's a nice thing that they offer. Proceed with caution in any payment plan situation. I don't really like to recommend those to people, but it, it it's nice to know that it exists. Yeah. Another great reason to use your Amex gold for booking flights is because if your bags go missing and you have you're on a flight, you checked a bag, it's nowhere to be found. You can get $500, up to $500 per person, um, per ticket paid with that card. And if somehow your carry-on goes missing, which seems difficult and unlikely, but (laughs) you can actually get a lot more money. You can get um, $1,250 for your carry-on bag if it goes missing. So that is automatic baggage protection that is Mm -hmm. included when you buy a flight with your Amex gold card. So I love that automatic protection. And then the other thing that you get, if you buy a round trip ticket and you pay for it entirely with your Amex gold card and it gets delayed for any number of covered reasons by 12 hours or more, Then there's trip delay insurance, and you can get up to $300 per trip. So if you need to go book a a night at a hotel because your flight got delayed, you can get reimbursed up to $300, and you can claim that twice in a 12-month period. And covered reasons do include severe weather, lost or stolen passports, oh my gosh, Mm. what a nightmare, Um, airline equipment failure, or the yikes, the the biggest yikes of all, terrorist or hijacking activity. Goodness gracious. Hopefully that one will never come into play, but you do get trip delay insurance along with the baggage insurance. Yeah, and that's nice. Sometimes I forget that these are a part of a card, but when I think about all the years that I used a debit card... Rather than a credit card to pay for things. And there's so many coverages. And we're going to get into even more. There's a purchase protection, different things that credit cards, and many credit cards offer them. Each bank has their own unique ones they offer. But when I was using a debit card all the time, I was not getting these automatic insurance protections on my purchases and on travel. And that's such a missed opportunity. And that's just money on the table that you, you know, you buy your flight with a debit card, things go wrong. You don't get reimbursed for any of it. That's, that's really scary. It's really true. It's actually painful to think of of how many times I've also done that. Don't use debit cards. They don't come even just and this is totally a tangent, but even just for fraud and financial protection in that area, it is yeah. so much more difficult to get your money back if somebody has stolen your debit card than to get things turned off and refunded if it's a credit card. Night and day experience difference. I had $800 stolen out of my physical bank account via an ATM and it took so long to get that back. If this has been, if this had been on a credit card, it would have been a completely different experience. So, yeah. I really just try not to use my debit card ever anymore. But one other great thing about this card also in terms of travel is that you can use it overseas. There are no foreign transaction fees, so this is a perfect travel card um, in terms of, you know, spending money across the pond because I think people forget sometimes to check their card for that. I have heard a few horror stories of people going on international trips and using their credit card, not understanding the existence of foreign transaction fees. Yeah, Um, that's a scary thought. Those add up, friends. They add up. So this Do is a keep great in card. mind the one downside to Amex that everyone loves to point out, though, <clears> is that <throat> overseas, internationally, not everywhere accepts Amex. Right. Even domestically, although it's it becoming still more and more rare here. domestically. 
um, other than Costco. Yeah, but Costco doesn't take MasterCard either. They're just kind of their own. Rude. They are rude. Uh, they only take Visa. Uh, but domestically, most places take Amex. Internationally, that's not always the case. So if you want to take your Amex, travel with it, it's still a great card to travel with with no fees. But you probably want to have a non-Amex card available to you as well. Absolutely. A backup Let's discuss our annual fee and how to offset it because that's the big drawback for people, I think. I mean, it's certainly why I doubt I will ever have a platinum because that one is crazy. But 250, guys, you you can make this 250 work for you. What I do want to say before we dive into this is that it makes me crazy when people say oh, it's $250, but then you get this, so it's basically free. Okay, first of all, I would never spend $120 on Uber or $120 at Grubhub or the Cheesecake Factory or any of those places in real life. So is it free? No. You do still have to spend the money, but it doesn't just feel like you're spending the money just to own a card if you take advantage of the credits. It feels like it's going towards something tangible. So I I want everybody to keep this picture in their mind of like, you get more than just the benefits of the card. You also get these other things. So you're basically doubling your investment. Okay. It's not free though. That is a pet peeve of mine. (laughs) It erases the charges. No, it does not. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, worked up. Let's Let's tell people what it is. So the annual fee is two fifty. <laughs> um, the offsetting credits total two hundred and forty dollars, but that is broken up. You get one hundred and twenty dollars that can be used for Uber or Uber Eats, but that does not come as a lump sum. Mm-hmm. It comes as ten dollars a month over the course of twelve months. So you need to link up your Uber account or Uber Eats account, and you will automatically get a little notification yep, every I month. I just on the got first mine today. Yep. On the first of the month, it will ding and tell you you've gotten your ten dollars for the month, and that sits in your Uber Eats account until for the month and you can use it at any time. Now, on the other hand, the the credit that we think of as a Grubhub credit, although it's more than just Grubhub, it's a dining credit. It's also $120 in the form of $10 a month, but it is a statement credit. Mm -hmm. So it is triggered by purchases through Grubhub, the Cheesecake Factory, Gold Belly, Wine.com, Milk Bar, and most Shake Shack locations. But for this one, you must go into your Amex account and click enroll to activate it. It does not automatically give you those statement credits if you have not enrolled in the benefit. And I didn't know this my first month of my card. So I did miss out on my first month of credit for this one, um, which is actually annoying because I I thought I had it. So I went and spent $10 at Grubhub and didn't get the statement credit. So you luckily were the one to tell me that, uh, that it's a little bit different than the Uber one. So Definitely make sure you enroll. But Grubhub is by far the easiest way to use this credit. And with Uber, for me, if you're not doing ride sharing, Uber Eats is also super easy. You can so easily get a Chipotle order. I mean, these days it's like $13 for a bowl at Chipotle, which is insane. But if you do a pickup order, you're essentially spending three bucks on your lunch. Not bad at all. Um, So that's my favorite way to use it. And I do want to mention a little stack or a little hack for anyone that has Amazon Prime because Amazon Prime offers people Grubhub Plus for free. And I can't remember how I discovered this. I found it randomly in the bottom of my Amazon Prime app. It was like not being advertised in my face. So you might have to dig a little to find this. But if you have Grubhub Plus, you get free delivery, a a reduced service fee, and then you also get 5% back of whatever you spend every time you order through the app in the form of credits in the app. So the other day when I ordered, I had a couple dollars in credit from, uh, I think from orders in Florida, I'm assuming when we were there. And then I also had the $10 statement credit that came back. Um, And I can get things delivered 
for very little for just the tip versus also a delivery fee, also a service fee. The other day I got a COVID test delivered to the house. That was no. so <laughs> really. That's a, I have never heard of that. I had I them go to Walgreens. Yeah, yeah, you can have, you can them, have them go to the convenience anywhere. stores. And I didn't want to potentially take my germs anywhere. And I felt like garbage. So Good girl. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Keep I, your you know, germs to I, yourself. I am responsible with my germs. I'd love pointing out that you can use it for pickup orders because that is the number one people say is, well, I wouldn't, I don't order delivery food. I don't, well, those people are not me because I most definitely (laughs) do order delivery food, but people tell me this all the time and it is very understandable, um, especially if your budget is tight. That's just not a, that is, that's a luxury for sure. That's not something that you're going to want to pay for often. And you can do the pickup orders and avoid having the extra delivery fee or having to pay tip. You just walk in yourself, pick it up. And it's a great way to use those monthly credits. Yeah, it's so easy. And it really, most places erases all of a lunch pretty easily. So I enjoy using those because I don't eat out ever. And it kind of is fun to two times a month get to treat myself. You know, reach yourself. Well, we're still trying to figure out how we can make this annual fee worth it. And so the next thing that we want to talk about is something that we've mentioned with Chase often when we've talked about our Chase cards. There Mm. are Amex offers and these should not be overlooked. Last year, I went back because you can see every Amex offer you've ever used. Last year, I redeemed $200. And $73.43 worth of Amex offers. Now, keep in mind, the annual fee was $250. I got my $240 worth of dining credits. And then I saved $273, more than the annual fee alone, just with the Amex offers. Yes. And this is not girl math. This is not girl math. You're not going in and being like, ooh, I'm going to go buy something from this store just because there's an offer. This is something that if you're like Mary Ellen or if you're what I try to be like, you just add them all to your card and then you get a nice pleasant surprise when you get an offer back because you happened to use one that was linked. Like that's that's the headspace that I go into with this so that I'm not tempted to spend things that I to spend money that I wasn't already going to spend. If you just throw them all on a card, then it's just like Christmas when you're like, "Oh, I I redeemed that offer on kindle.com. I didn't realize that I did that, but how nice that I got $5 back from that." That's just an example of one that happened recently. Yeah, I like to be I like to be intentional with my offers sometimes for sure. And that's particularly when I'm Christmas shopping. Mm-hmm. I if I'm not sure what I'm going to get someone and I'm kind of just thinking in general, I may go look at the Amex offers. I may also look at Rakuten or mm-hmm. another shopping portal, figure out where the deals are, where I could do stacks of offers. Yes. I did this at the holidays. I bought our teachers, both of my kids' teachers, Stanley mugs. Too nice. (laughs) So nice. Well, it was a great deal also. I want to buy something that people will enjoy. And at the time that I bought it, I had 15% cash back from Rakuten, although I get it as Amex points. But I have 15% at Rakuten. And then there was an Amex offer where if you spend $60, you get $15. $15 back. Mm. So when I added up discounts and offers, you know, it was a great deal for a nice product that I thought someone would want. So sometimes I'm intentional about looking at the offers and my shopping portals to come up with a good combination. And then other times, like you said, it's fun to just add them all to the card. And then sometimes things pop up. Like right now there's one for McDonald's. Spend <laughs> $15 or more at McDonald's, get $5 back up to three times. And we don't eat at McDonald's often, but just add it to your card because that's also your restaurant card because you're getting four times back at restaurants. And then you're also going to get $5 back. They often have Jersey Mike's and Olive Garden, Longhorn Steakhouse. These these places are constantly on the Amex offers. So it's yeah, hard and if to you guys those. if you guys are Lululemon people, I don't ever buy full price Lululemon. Although I I occasionally will get you know a pair of Lulus in a secondhand shop because we all know that I love my Goodwill um, and used things. But the Lulu offer right now is really good. One hundred and twenty five dollars or more gets you twenty five hundred points. 
I I would definitely spring for that if you're a person who already invests in these very expensive yoga pants. Um, but I think it's important to note that it does not show you all of the offers at the t- at, at a time. Like if you think you've scrolled to the bottom, that's not actually all of them. So tell people what you do to make sure you're seeing all of the offers because I can't even see the McDonald's one in my app right now. Right. You probably don't have that. So what I've learned is Amex will show you 100 offers at a time. But at any given time, there is 400 offers out there that different people have different offers. But what you can do to get yourself more offers, especially if you've heard there's a good one out there and you don't have it, you add every single one of those offers to your card, all 100 of them, whether you want them or not, just click add to card and then it will repopulate with new offers. So if you add all of the offers, then you'll get to see the next hundred, add those to your card, see the next hundred, and you can make sure that you are getting, you know, all of the offers that you want and all the opportunities for saving money. Yeah, absolutely. I have some really interesting ones in my app right now. Um, The one that intrigues me the most, which won't intrigue you at all because you already have Walmart Plus. Um, Currently, they're running an offer where if you spend $98 on a Walmart Plus membership, you get $49 back. So that's essentially half off of your annual fee for Walmart Plus, and that might be of interest to people who potentially are interested in earning Chase points right now because, as you might remember from our Chase episode, if you have Walmart Plus, you can use Scan and Go in Walmart, and it codes as online groceries and triggers the three times points on Chase Sapphire Preferred. So obviously we know Amex gets a great multiplier on groceries, but sometimes you might be in a season where you're going for Chase points. And if you have Walmart Plus, you can get Chase points on groceries in Walmart. But personally, I was not going to spring for the $100 a year for Walmart Plus, but $50 a year is a little bit more uh, manageable. Another interesting offer that I saw is a Hyatt offer for select secrets and impressions resorts. Spend $750, get $200 back. Obviously, when we're doing Hyatts, we're mostly thinking about points. But when I thought this might be interesting is like, okay, well, what if you didn't have enough points and you were doing a points plus cash situation um, for a stay at an all-inclusive Knocking $200 off of that bill is incredible, I I think. Yeah, it really is. There's several on mine right now for Marriott. Spend mm-hmm. $250 at Marriott Bonvoy, get $50 back. So there's offers That's... for SeatGeek, Allure Beauty Box. Is that the one you do? I know it's you did the one, one I the... do, and I don't see the offer for it. I kind of want to cancel oh. and redo it, whatever the offer is. Well, I'm tempted to get, I've never gotten one of those beauty boxes, but now I know I kind of want to, but this is such a a treat. This is an example of using the offer to convince me to spend money that I probably Uh wouldn't otherwise. You know, your first box is like $15 or something though. It's like nothing. It's like nothing. Uh, Well, after we went to Florida and I saw all your goodies and Mm -hmm, makeup mm -hmm, stuff, it made mm -hmm, me want to do it. But my offers, I also have Bards and Noble. I have Zappos. I have a Frontier Airlines one, Top Golf. So there's a lot. But if it sounds overwhelming having to keep up with offers, Chase offers, Amex offers, you got all these cards, there are some apps that will automatically add all the offers to your card. I don't personally use them, but I know Card Pointers is mm-hmm. one of the apps that people really like that automatically will add offers over to your card so that they're triggered when you spend. So those kind of options are out there if you do some digging. They are. They, co- they cost some card pointers specifically, I believe, was 50 something dollars a year. So I did a free trial on that and it was helpful. But again, I'm such a budget person. I'd rather do a little extra legwork than spend $50. That's just me. Some people are not like that. And also I say that, but do I actually remember 
to do the legwork? No, I do not. Well, There's that's another their marketing. That's what uh, they say is that I you'll know. actually save more money it's than the membership costs. Probably cost. true. There's a really good one right now for Philip 66 and Conoco gas stations for plus two membership rewards points per dollar. So um, it, that's a little confusing, the language to me. Does that mean like you already get a dollar and then you get an additional two? So is that actually three points per dollar? Yeah, points. So normally you would get a point for every dollar you spend. So that's two more. So that's three points okay. per dollar at those gas stations. I feel like it would be more simple if they would just say get three points per dollar rather than get plus two. I don't know why. It even sounds yeah. better when it says three, but whatever. Anyways, that's I agree. A, a 3x on gas, so good. Such a good multiplier, especially if you're trying to accumulate Amex points right now. I uh, love that. So super I will say good offers. Overall, the Amex website can be very annoying because when you click on some things like let me see my benefits, then it pulls up a whole nother tab. Like it's not the most user-friendly website, I don't think. But one thing that we both decided that we do like is with the MX offers, they are searchable. So you can type yep. in a little search bar, oh my gosh, I'm about to spend money at this website. Let me just make sure there's not an offer. You can type it in versus on your chase cards. You just have to scroll through them so all and look. annoying. It's so yeah. annoying. So yeah, I do love Love the searchable feature. It's actually insane that Chase does not do that. Um, I also find the Amex offers in general to be better than the Chase offers. Um, or maybe it's just more applicable places to my life. I don't know. I rarely find Chase offers that I like. Although when I did the Rakuten the other day, there was a 2% PetSmart on one of my Chase cards. So I was able to do a little baby stack getting 2x points on the Chase card and 20% in Amex points through Rakuten. So that was very nice. So as we're talking about all of this shopping and triggering these offers and using shopping portals to stack deals, one other thing that the Amex Gold Card has is some pretty good purchase protection. So if you use your Amex Gold Card to buy something and within the first 90 days it is stolen, it's accidentally damaged, it's lost, you can get reimbursed for it. Up That's to so 10, crazy. Up to yeah, up to $10,000 per purchase, which I don't make a lot of $10,000 purchases, um, and up to $50,000 per year. But what I'm thinking of for this is sometimes I'll buy a new camera. You know, maybe yeah. we're going on a new trip. We're going on a big trip this summer, and I just bought a fun new toy, a new 360 action camera that I'm excited about. And when you buy something like that with your MX Gold, and maybe in the first three months you go on your trip, you lose it or it gets scratched up or damaged in some way, you can look into maybe getting some purchase protection for that. Yeah. I mean, when we were in Florida, I told you, I think your gimbal that you were using to mount your phone is broken. Did you buy that on your Amex? That's a good question. I'll have to go back and look. I'm if not it's sure. been less than 90 days, maybe you should see if you can get a replacement. Because uh, I would question. actually <laughs> love to hear somebody do this in real life. And I would love to know what the process is like. That just seems like a lot that they would be giving up in terms of you being able to say, I personally lost this. Can you give me a new one? Like, I want to know what the hoops are like to jump through that. Yeah, there's always red tape, but I have had internet friends, not necessarily friends day to day in real life, but internet friends that have done this, have shared this um, purchase protection as a benefit of the card. So if you do a little digging and research, you can maybe find some examples of where people have been successful um, getting money back. Yeah, that's very, it's fascinating to me, but there are some very cool things on this card. Another thing that is kind of in the same vein is their extension of the manufacturer's warranty. So if you buy something with a warranty on it that comes with five years or less, you get an additional year of extended warranty through American Express, um, which it you get the actual amount charged on your card for whatever you bought up to $10,000. And that maxes out at $50,000 a year, which again, sounds very, very generous. There's a lot of terms and conditions on this, but 
Um, as you were mentioning, like if you bought a camera for a trip and it came with a five year or less warranty, Amex basically extends your warranty on that camera for an additional year. So I don't know. Yeah, Again, I don't know about how you go about using such a thing, but it's good to know that's there. I think that these are the benefits that go unused so often, which is probably why they are able to continue offering them because I would imagine the amount of people that actually claim these benefits are very, very small. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But it's good to know they're there and good to know that you get things like that rather than using a debit card. So let's now switch gears into some really fun things. We Mm -hmm. have these cards because we love to travel and there is an Amex travel portal. And when you book through that portal, there are some hotels, some nice hotels that are what they call the hotel collection. So there is the hotel collection is different than the Amex fine hotels and resorts collection. So platinum card holders have access to both special benefits for Amex fine hotels and resorts and benefits for the hotel collection. If you have just an Amex Gold, I don't want to say just an Amex Gold because we are telling (laughs) you it's a great card, but with the Amex Gold, we don't worry so much about the Amex fine hotels and resorts. Instead, we're focused on our benefits through the hotel collection. Yes. And the hotel collection, if you book Two or more nights, you get $100 in experience credit. So say you book a hotel that has a really nice spa or a restaurant, you get $100 to use towards those experiences. Every hotel is different. So some of the hotels will just erase it from your bill automatically. It's kind of like getting a $100 gift card at check-in that you can use however you want on their property and... And it'll just be erased off your bill. Also, if you book a hotel collection hotel through Amex Travel Portal, you can get a room upgrade when you check in if it is available. In order to get any of the hotel collection benefits, you have to pay with cash or points through the portal. So you cannot just book with your card on the hotel website. So that is important to note. It's different than their points multipliers on uh, booking air travel. And as with everything we tell you, things are always changing in the points and miles game. So benefits change, hotels in the collections change. So before you go or do anything, make sure everything we said is still up to date. But as of June of 2024, um, These are the benefits, and these are just a few hotels in the hotel collection, just to give you an idea. There's the Bellagio in Vegas, the Battery Wharf Hotel in Boston, um, Canopy by Hilton Hotels, Ondas by Hyatt, and the Chicago Athletic Association Hotel in Chicago, which is where I took Juliet and her best friend for a birthday surprise trip back in December. You might remember we did that entirely on points because that is actually a Hyatt property. Um So it would be interesting to weigh whether or not you want to book this through the Amex portal for some of those special benefits versus using Hyatt points. I would actually be interested to dig into that a little as a side-by-side comparison. Maybe I will post a reel for you guys comparing the two. That would be interesting. And it always depends on what you're going for. You know, sometimes it's you just decide this is an earning opportunity rather than a spending points opportunity. We want to get these fun benefits. Maybe it's a very special weekend getaway. And so using the spa credit, you know, it's more of a treat yourself weekend than budget with the family. And we're going to go on all points kind of thing. Different purpose for the travel. But I want to mention when we said the Canopy by Hilton Hotels and Andes Hotels, that's just some of the locations but there just tends to be a lot of those that pop up on the hotel collection. Certainly not all of them, right? but I just happen to notice a lot of those popping up on the hotel collection. Right. But I mean, you can book these hotels with Amex points in the Amex portal and you still will get the experience credit and the potential room upgrade and that kind of thing. Now, We know that the value in a portal is going to be based on the dollar amount and not based on a fixed award chart like Hyatt. So my guess is that your points 
prices would be rather high um, for doing these things in points. So again, it might be better to use it as an earning opportunity for points versus a time to spend your points. But like I said, I am going to dig a little and just see points per night, what the difference is for booking through Hyatt versus booking on here. And I always double check. I'll check Amex Travel. I will check my Chase Portal. I'll check my Capital One. I always compare all the websites and weigh all the options before I choose where I want to book because they are they are different. They're not going to be the same price. Organized everywhere. of you. Very. <laughs> <I know. laughs> She's the organized one. I don't know how. If you saw my house, if you saw the piles of laundry that built up in my house, you would not think I was the organized one. Casually glancing over my shoulder at piles of laundry. My husband has just dug through. I don't know if he did it because my birthday is coming up, but we had we were in such a deep laundry hole that I was never going to climb out. And he has systematically gone through and plugged away day by day and gotten our pile down to nothing. And I think it is a gift to me for my birthday. And what I a very doll. much appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I got to the point where I was so overwhelmed that I was tar- I was targeted for an ad for somebody who would pick my laundry up for my house and wash it and fold it for a dollar a pound. And I was like, I think... I think I might do this. There's probably 300, 300 pounds of laundry here, probably, and uh, worth it. Worth yeah, it. I have done that before. I've gotten into such a deep hole that I'm like, I can never do this. I I bagged up about half of it and sent it away to a laundry. I have only done that once or twice because we cannot afford it on any kind of regular basis. But I had to because I was like, I'm never going to get out of this bit. But that's tangent. Me. No, so surely our listeners are not cannot understand this. No, they have perfect, pristine houses and their laundry is always folded and stacked and hung neatly. Good for uh, y'all. Good job, guys. Good. Jo- We're proud of you. So let's talk about Amex Transfer Partners because yes. that's a huge part of any travel credit card is you want to know who can you transfer these partners to? I yeah. mean, who can we transfer these points to? It's really say. the the most fun. It is the most fun. It's nerve wracking and fun at the same time, unless they take away a transfer bonus in the last minute, and then it is not so fun. I'm sorry. What I think we should do is I'm gonna read through the the airline partners that just do the one to one, and then at the end I'll tell you the ones that don't do one to one, and then you should go through the hotels. How does that sound? Okay. All right, here's our list. Amex one-to-one transfer partners. And guys, I'm sure you know what that means, but I'm just going to say it. One-to-one means essentially transfer 1,000 points, get 1,000 points. They transfer evenly. Uh, We've got Aer Lingus, Canadian Aeroplan, Air France, ANA, Avianca Life Miles, British Airways, Cathay Pacific, Delta. Um, There's a tree. uh, There's a fee. There's a fee to transfer to domestic airlines, which is unfortunate, but you don't always have to transfer to domestic airlines to fly domestically. Emirates, Etihad, Hawaiian, Iberia, Qantas. I thought it was Qantas always, but it doesn't have a U. Huh. Who knows? I Hopefully, know. I'm just not butchering all Maybe of these. Maybe they don't have the U in Australia. Qantas? Quant- they don't Qantas? do the Q-U, but it's still qu. Okay, Who well, knows? I'm going to say Qantas, Qatar, Singapore, and Virgin Atlantic. And now, for one less fun one, JetBlue transfers at a slight deficit, which is so bizarre to my brain. Um, yeah. It is like if you transfer 250 points, you get... 200 points. Don't love that at all. Aeromexico is a fun one because it transfers a uh, thousand to sixteen hundred. So that's a nice little percentage chunk there. Um, what is that? Sixty percent, right? I'm not good yeah, at math, nice but little, I think that's a sixty nice percent essentially transfer bonus. So I don't know. See where Aero Mexico can take you with your Amex points. And now you, let's do hotels. 
Yes. Sure. Tell the people. So the only other thing I'd say about the airlines is with the JetBlue, that is a bummer that it's not a one-to-one ratio, but you can transfer in smaller increments than the others that you have to transfer at least a thousand points mm-hmm. at a time or in a thousand point increments. So with the hotels, you have choice hotels. And for anyone who's like, what is a choice hotel? Radisson, Comfort Inn and Suites, Clarion Hotels, Cambria Hotels. And then another little weird fact about choice hotels, if you have points in the choice hotel program, those can actually be transferred to Air France KLM, which is an interesting little partnership. So (laughs) weird. So if you accidentally transfer your points to choice from Amex and then you don't want them there anymore, you can send them to KLM. Is that what I've just heard? You can't send them back to Amex, but they're not stuck forever. Weird. So bizarre. Other ones we have Hilton Honors. You can do 1,000 Amex points will equal 2,000 Hilton Honors points. And that's because Hilton doesn't have great redemptions, you know. When you get a hotel night, yeah, I'd still doubt you will do that much. Even if it sounds good, 1,000 for 2,000 of their points, it's not the best. And Marriott Bonvoy is also one-to-one. So 1,000 points for 1,000 Marriott points. Yeah, I'll mention, like, as I've been digging into the honeymoon stuff, I have looked at some Hilton all-inclusives just to kind of get an idea. And I found some that had like 98,000 point nights. So if you think about that, you're looking, you know, in the high 40s per night. So for a Hilton all-inclusive, it's going to be very, very luxurious. It's definitely more than Hyatt's, but maybe that to some people is a a good redemption for that level of luxury. Hilton resorts are really known for being very outstanding. So um, it could be worth it to some people, but in general, for me, wanting to spread my points out and making them go as far as humanly possible, even really for my honeymoon – I can't stomach that kind of redemption, but at least you get that one to two. I mean, who's going to spend 98,000 points for one night? Yeah. I I would not think anybody really, but people do. People do. So a couple of drawbacks to the card. There are a lot of benefits. Just earning those four times points and the Rakuten points, they just pile up. The points yeah. come quickly with this card, which I really appreciate. But keep in mind, it is not a visa, so you can't use it at Costco. Um, and then we mentioned also that internationally, sometimes there are places that don't accept Amex card. There's one thing that is billed as a benefit of the card, but you need to know, understand it fully. You can send money through Venmo. So like my child had a piano teacher that accepted payment via Venmo. Yeah. And so for a while I thought, oh, I can pay with my Amex through Venmo and then I'll earn points on his piano lessons rather than just sending her cash through Venmo like I normally would and getting nothing for it. Unfortunately, you can do it through Amex, but you don't actually earn membership rewards for money sent through Venmo. That's really, really sad because I actually forgot about this benefit and was just thinking when I started reading your notes before I got to the end of them that I could pay for my child's very expensive voice lessons and earn some points on those. But it's nice, though, if you are – um, paying for something and maybe feel like you need 30 days to come up with the money. <laughs> yes. Like when, yeah. when when your child starts taking double the length in voice lessons over the summer and suddenly your voice lesson bill doubles and you're like, oops, I really forgot this was coming. I think everything doubles over the summer. Oh, all the camp cost and fees. The summer is expensive. <laughs> the summer is absolutely bananas. Absolutely crazy. It's kind of nice to have a child who – doesn't have to be in camp every second of every day anymore for me to go to work. Like she can actually be at home if there's nothing going on that week, which is before when she was little and I still was working 50 hours a week. I was like, where am I supposed to get a thousand dollars a week to that's my job at that time. That's like what I was making. I was like, what do people do? Summer is crazy, man. Tangent. crazy. 
So the last thing that we have covered most of the Amex Gold, one last thing that hopefully you will never need, but there is a global assist hotline. Mm -hmm. If you are traveling, you're more than 100 miles from home, certainly if you're in a foreign country and you need help, maybe you have a medical emergency, a travel emergency, such as losing your passport, having your luggage go missing, getting into some kind of weird legal trouble, needing help, being in another country, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Amex does give you access to a global assist hotline that can help you navigate some of those scary things when you're mm. away from home. So yes. just another nice perk of the card, something in your back pocket that you hope you don't have to use, but it's good to know it's there. Absolutely. it. I think... It's just a little peace of mind, which is so nice because sometimes you just – you don't know what's going to happen. It's, traveling overseas can have a lot of interesting experiences. I follow somebody who talks regularly about how to keep from being pickpocketed or, or scammed in France. And I was thinking about this when I saw this note. I was like, it would be so nice to just know you could call somebody if your passport just suddenly goes missing from your bag. So that is like a big fear that I have. It's a big fear that I have too. You're stuck. Like if you're supposed to fly back in a couple days, what in the world do you do without a passport? So I would terrify be calling. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I think we forgot to mention is the rental car insurance, a little different than the Chase Sapphire Preferred. It's not primary full coverage. It is secondary after your own insurance coverage. So essentially it means you're not going to be paying anything out of pocket for the damage, which is great, but your insurance goes into play first. You do have to have insurance, I believe, versus the Chase FR Preferred covers you for a rental car, even if your personal insurance does not cover your rental car. So, and one other fun fact, we're, this is like the we're, end or we're touching up on anything <laughs> that maybe we mentioned in, in chatting about the card. This is totally random, but you know, we love good benefits. Maybe you even already have an Amex card and you're listening because you want to learn about benefits you didn't even know you had. Mm. There is a complimentary shop runner membership and that gives you free two-day shipping at various online stores. Again, like the dining credit, you have to enroll. You need to go into your account, click enroll, and then you get this complimentary membership. I enrolled just because it was there. And then it has come up once or twice. And I wish I could remember the specific websites where it has come into play. But once or twice, I have been checking out online and seen, oh, shop runner, wait a minute, I have that and click it and free two day shipping. So okay. love that. I didn't know about this benefit. So um, I that's very interesting to me. And I am the kind of person who if I need something quickly, will spend extra money getting it off of Amazon to have it at my house tomorrow, uh, which is not a great habit. Don't recommend. So this this might come into play for people like that who need things quickly, but want to just pay the normal price for an item versus the Amazon inflated price to get it to your house quicker. Yes. Yes, yes. It's amazing how budget friendly I will be until it comes to my impulsive ADHD nature. And then all of a sudden, all the budget stuff goes out the window and I'm like, I need it now. Out the window. For sure. Me too. Unbelievable. Well, we really hope that this has been a helpful deep dive for you guys today. We both really, truly are obsessed with this card. I... I suggest it to people all the time. And for some reason, people are more hesitant about American Express. I don't know. It's got a it's got a stigma. It's got like this fancy po- person sheen on it. And people are always like, no, Amex? No, that's not for me. But you know what? It is for you. It is. It's a great card. And let's remember, with the sign-up bonuses on these cards, you have to get Amex family cards in order. You have to start at the bottom and work your way up. So we, neither of us have the green, but some people do like the green for travel. So if if you Google that and that's something you're interested in, you would need to get that first before you get the gold. And then you can get the gold and then you can get the platinum. If you get these cards out of order, you will not earn the sign-up bonus, which is a newer rule instituted by Amex. And it is important to note, um, personally, I don't find the green to be a value in my life. So I was okay going straight to the gold. The gold is really helpful for me and my family in terms of earning. Um, We do have our link in the show notes for you guys to use for this card. Please remember not to Google 
an offer. You might click on this link and it might give you uh, a random number of points. Um, If you would like us to personally send you a link, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram because if we send it to you, it might generate something different. If you open it in a different browser, it might generate something different. Like feel free to to try and, you know, finagle your way through this to try to get a higher offer. I don't know if it's offering people a higher amount right now, but it's certainly not it's certainly worth attempting to maybe try to get more points. But either way, such a valuable card. It is. And it's heavy. It feels nice in the hand. And you can even choose between a gold card, as stated, or a rose gold card. I have rose gold. I do too. Poor Lindsay. If you listened to our last episode, they did not send her the rose gold, even though she requested it. So that's unacceptable. Um, It's a beautiful card. It's heavy. It makes you feel fancy. My daughter said, why do you have an American Express? That's a rich people card. And I was like, yes, it is. Yeah. We're American Express people now, honey. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, my gosh. I feel like a poser. I haven't no. heard that word since I was a teen. Since middle school. <laughs> poser. Bring it back. Bringing it back. One middle school lingo word at a time. You're welcome for this. We, you know, we just get real here. We're so entertaining. Okay. No posers here. No posers here. Only real all the time. Guys, I just I just completed this entire episode with a migraine. So if you really f- listened to this today and felt like she is just extra odd, it's just because there's men with ice picks living in the right side of my brain stabbing the nerves behind my eyeball. So totally fine. I'm fine. Time to go rest. Drink Time. that liquid IV. Go I in know. a dark space. Liquid IV, would you like down. to sponsor our podcast? Thank you. I love liquid IV. And I you do- know what? I often use Chaser MX offers to get liquid IV. Oh, see, I always buy it at Costco. So see, I didn't even know. Um, now I got to go look because it really is kind of a game changer in terms of, especially if you're a person who gets headaches. It, it does actually help. I actually forgot that I had it. And Mary Ellen here was like, um, go drink some liquid IV. And I was like, oh, yeah, there's some in my kitchen. Thanks for reminding me to just do the basic 101 things for helping me get over a headache. Anyways. Self-care 101, hydrate. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. All the life tips you did not ask for in this episode today. Anyways, we love you all. We're grateful for you for being here, for listening, for rating and reviewing. Don't forget, super easy to do that. Scroll down to the bottom of all of our episodes. Click the five stars if you're getting value from the show. It helps us grow. It helps us reach more people. It helps us reach guests and keep hopefully bringing you guys things that you feel are a blessing to your life. And be like our friend Stephanie and share with us on our Facebook page. We want to hear about your redemptions. It's so exciting. And even if we are not always the best at responding, I'm really talking about myself here because Mary Ellen is amazing at responding to people. I do see it. I just also look while I'm doing 10 other things and then I forget. So it's not you. It's my ADHD. I see everything that everybody says, and I love you all, and I appreciate you all. And at some point when I am not working full-time and momming and doing a podcast and trying to run an Instagram and trying to be on Facebook, I will get better about responding to people, I swear. Okay, that's all. We hope that you guys have a wonderful start to your summer. Go jump in a pool or a lake. Do something wonderful. Drink some lemonade. Have a popsicle. And we will see you next week. Bye. If you enjoyed this show today, please consider writing us a review or clicking five stars wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please subscribe and follow along so that you never miss an episode. You can follow the podcast on Instagram or YouTube at Wonderland on Points Podcast. You can find me on Instagram at Family Travel for the Win with the number four. And you can find me on Instagram at Points to Wonderland. If you're thinking about getting a new travel rewards credit card, consider using the links in our show notes. Using our links helps to support us and keep our podcast going so we can provide you with all the latest tips and tricks when it comes to traveling on points. And if you aren't sure which card is right for you, shoot us an email at wonderlandonpoints at gmail.com and we would be happy to walk you through a free card consultation. 
That's also a great place to send us all of your comments and questions. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you here next time.